do most of the stars in your nightscape images appear white, well, then you might have ruined your star colors. In this episode, I'll show you how to get colorful stars in your astrophotos. Welcome back to the channel. This is Starscape. Contrary to what I used to believe myself, not all stars are white. Uh, they come in a variation of colors, ranging from blue to red. It actually depends on the temperature of the star. For example, our own star, the Sun, uh, sits somewhere in the middle and it has a yellow color. So how do we get those beautiful colors into our photos then? Well, there are two moments to pay special attention to. And the first is during uh, the shooting process itself. You don't want to overexpose your images. Uh, you want to take a deeper look into your histogram. And the second moment is when you are post-processing your image. Um, you might want to introduce a star mask before you are going to stretch your data. Now let's take a deeper look into these two points. As astrophotographers, we try to gather as much light as possible because it's so dark, right? Well, yes, but consider this. The stars themselves are often very bright. So actually, we are looking at a very high contrast scene. And this makes it uh, pretty easy to uh, overexpose your stars. The light coming off the stars fall onto your camera sensor. And as long as you have the shutter open, your sensor um, just continues to gather that light until it is fully saturated, uh, which causes the stars to uh, appear all white and lose all their color. Oh no! However, if you pay special attention to your histogram while shooting, you can prevent a lot of the disaster from happening. So let's get started and take a look at our histogram. Well, you can see this one was exposed pretty well. And you can see the histogram here. And what you are trying to do very roughly is to get that largest peak not further to the right than about one third. And if you want to be a bit more specific, you don't want that fall off of your uh, large peak uh, to pass over the half of the histogram. So here you can see I pass it just a little bit, but I think this is exposed pretty well. And what you are also looking for is to create some separation between the sky peak, which is this largest peak here, and the smaller peak before, which is your foreground. And you can see there is just a little bit space here in between, and that is what you're looking for. If you shoot for this histogram, your base material will not be overexposed. So you've had a good night of astrophotography and you expose your images well. You have a beautiful histogram. Well, what's next? Um, well, you are going to post-process your images. And you might want to introduce a star mask here. And basically the moment where you want to introduce a star mask is after you have made uh, some basic color adjustments in Lightroom and after you have stacked your results, if you have shot multiple exposures to stack them. I'm not going to show you uh, how to do that editing in Lightroom and stacking because I've made a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to process your Milky Way images. And I'll put a link up in the description here. So let's take a look at star masks. There are multiple ways to make a star mask, but I usually advise to uh, use easy dedicated software. In my case, I'm using uh, Starnet, which you can download for free on starnetastro.com. Uh, when you click on download, you can uh, then download the graphical interface for Windows and also for Mac. Okay, once you've downloaded um, the program Starnet, you uh, open it and you put your input file here, which is uh, the file uh, you uh, color balanced in Lightroom or your stacked result. In my case, I'll uh, use a stacked result. I shot a couple of months before in the German Eiffel, I'll put a link up here. Beautiful trip, great adventure. Um, the stacked file we want to make a star mask on, so we click on open and uh, the output file here, let's say uh, starless for the tutorial. And we click on run. And then it has to do its thing and after that it spits out a starless version of your image. Okay, so once Starnet is done it has uh, made a starless image and I've opened them here uh, as layers in uh, Photoshop. Well, actually this one it does not put out. <laughs> uh, this is our uh, stacked result and if we look to the starless version, it looks like this. So you can only see the nebulosity and the stars have disappeared. And you can also see some dust spots irritatingly from my camera. 
Um, so uh, what we first want to do is make a stars only version and if you have the starless version on top of your stacked image you can select the blend mode and the blend mode you have to pick difference and you can see only stars here that's logical because the difference between the stacked result and the starless version are of course only the stars after that we want to uh, stamp the visible layer which we do with a control a shift alt e and we can call this layer stars only and for now we put the stars only to the background um, we have to get it back to normal here. Okay, so what you want to do now is um, edit uh, your starless version first uh, to your liking. Well, I'm not going into very much detail uh, about it. I'll just do a really quick edit and after that we'll come back. I'll speed it up. Okay, I've done a really rough edit uh, of my uh, nebulosity of the Milky Way here. Uh, and we'll call this layer... Um, well, let's just call it Milky Way. And what you want to do, you want to put back your stars in. But first, let's take a look to our stars only layer. If we zoom in, you can see that there is indeed some color in our stars, but it's not really much yet. So we'll um, yeah, just edit this layer first to get a bit more color into the stars. We'll just saturate it a bit. Let's uh, zoom in here so that we can check what is happening. All right, let's say the saturation. Look at that. All the beautiful orange and blue tones of the stars coming back. Yes. Beautiful. All right. Normally, I advise you to also change the temperature a bit uh, to, to, to tweak it, but I think this one, uh, the temperature is, uh, yeah, pretty well, ranging from blue to orange, which is the star color. Okay, I'm happy with this, I'm clicking OK. And now I have my stars only on top, and what you basically do is change the blending mode from normal to screen. Okay, so that was my battery dying on me. <laughs> I've uh, replaced it. Um, what I wanted to show you is a version using a, an, an edited version using a star mask and without using a star mask. Um, let's say if you edited a normal stacked version uh, without um, making use of the star mask, it can come out something like this, very roughly, very roughly. But if we zoom in. You can see that the stars here have lost, oh, not that much, have lost most of their color. And if we compare it uh, with the edited version with the star mask applied, it looks something like this. So you can see there's a lot more star color here in this uh, star mask edited version than a normal edited version. There's also a big difference in star size. And normally I would um, do some star reduction on, uh, on this version, but... Uh, Using a star mask, star reduction is uh, most of the time not even necessary. So yeah, I think a big difference. So next time when you're out shooting, pay special attention to the histogram and introduce a star mask into your post-processing workflow. This will definitely result in better star colors than before. I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave me a like and a comment. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Peace.